and the big part of the problem is uh, the cost of services because sure. you're insured. How do you deal with that? Right? How do you deal with that? Right. But the one thing we know in this battle between Obamacare and transitioning to Trump Care, potentially transitioning to Trump Care, the three main stakeholders. There's the insurance insurers, there's the health care providers, and there's the patients, us, right, the citizenry. Who's going to take less? D it wasn't like Obamacare has been there for 50 years, right? Pre-Obamacare, pre the insurance companies knew it was coming, right? They could have pushed rates down, but health care costs kept on going. And they sat at the table, and they played ball with the government and Congress, and they went along. Exactly right. They're getting more customers than ever. Well, yeah, now. because people, they... They're, they're compelled to do so, right? And you know, and even the way Obamacare was handled, right? The, the, which is a whole nother, the three R's and, and, and dealing with all that. But the reality is, with changes in technology, the ability to evolve to government as a service, as a libertarian, I think we can reduce employment in government by at least a third, reduce the overhead and administration by as mu that much or more, so that we can offer more to services for for, for our citizens and so if, if when it comes down to it where I tend to disagree with everybody and it, this is the libertarian in me I, I'm happy to push down the size of government and I'm happy to make work on making government more efficient because then more money can pass through and help the people who need it and that's what needs to change not because we can't manage government let's not deal with the health care of our citizens and you, I have one more for you, the Trump tax returns. Uh -huh. What was your reaction when you saw... Good returns? for him. Yeah, good for him. Like I said up there, if you made $150 million in a year, that's good no matter what. You know, now how much of it is cash, we don't know. But the interesting thing to me was, and I looked at him this morning, he had $22 million that he paid in um, as... Um, you have to anticipate what your next year's taxes are going to be, so you have to pay in. And he paid $22 million in in 2004 against his potential um, 2005, which means he made some decent money in 2004, too. But that's also the year he declared bankruptcy um, for the casino, So and he kind of swindled his shareholders. So I don't know if all this in 2004 and 2005 was a result of um, debt being forgiven or stock shares that he sold so it's hard to know for sure. Do you think he should be proactive and release some more years of his returns? Should do I think so? Yeah, of course. But you know, will he? Of course not. You know, for all we know, he's the one who leaked it because it was a good year for him. You never know. You never, you never know, know, right? I mean, yeah. So look, all that stuff is just—it's it, interesting, but it doesn't change who he is, one way or the other.